first as well as the last time in your student life when you people might be dying to rush to the college, right? Okay, anyways, there has been like online classes going on for all the subjects. So now I'm trying by narrating these PowerPoint slides. Okay, hope you will like this way of teaching and please provide me the feedback. Like if you did like this way of teaching or any constructive suggestion for the improvement of this, there will be so many chances of the improvement. Please provide the feedback and suggestion in the comment section. And what I'm doing in this one is like, I'll just narrate the slide and I'll use either the marker or the laser or I will try to draw some of the sketches which I'm very bad at but still I'll try so what is my advice for you is I advise you to play this presentation either download this one this PowerPoint presentation open it in the Microsoft Office PowerPoint software and play this entire slide as slideshow put the headphone or the earphone on and just play the slideshow from slideshow from first slide and then there is no need to do anything I will keep on narrating the slide and as soon as the narration on one particular slide ends it will switch over to the next slide you don't have to do anything just play the slide show and listen to the things okay so regarding the study part we have started the CNS right and in the CNS there have been three four classes and in the initial classes we have covered the neuron part, the structure of the neuron, the physiological anatomy of the neuron, type of the nerve fibers, right? Different, different structure part of the neuron. Then classification of the neurons. We have done all types of the classification based on their like conduction velocity and their diameter, right? Then there was one lecture on this one, no injury, right? We have covered that, that important topic was in that now injury was valerian degeneration. How to now respond to the injury part. Then strength duration curve we have covered. And in the last class, there was one class of the sinus. And that last class, if I'm not wrong, it was on the 16th or 17th of the March like that, means there has been more than one month since the last class of the sinus. So I will try to just cover up part covered in that last class of the sinus try to give the brief overview and then we will move to the next part of the sinus and in this class I will cover this whole sinus topic there might be something like lacking I might miss some of the points that I will try to look after I will go back and look if there is any topic remaining in the sinus part then I will try to cover that part in the next class. So in the sinus like we have covered in the previous class first few like 20-25 slides we have covered in the previous class so I'll try to quickly go through those slides. So sinus is what is the definition of the sinus? It's a reason of the functional contact and anatomical differentiation between two neurons or we can say the anatomic site where the nerve cells communicate among themselves. So the action potential, why this synapse is necessary? Because the action potential which is generated in one neuron, it cannot cross to the second neuron through the synaptic cleft. That action potential will end up in the neuron in which it gets generated and the ultimate effect will be release of some of the chemical substance. That chemical substance will go and get attached to the second neuron. Like say, action potential gets generated in this neuron. It will end up, it will reach up to this one. And then there is suppose this is the second neuron, that is the post synaptic neuron. So action potential cannot jump from this point to this one. It cannot cross this synaptic cleft. For that it will release those neurotransmitters and those neurotransmitters will get released 
get attached to the postsynaptic neuron receptors. So we can say that there are three things of the new synapse that constitute the synapse. One is presynaptic neuron or presynaptic ending, end of the say one second. This is presynaptic neuron and this is post synaptic neuron. So what is synapse? Synapse is this part. One is presynaptic ending. Second is post synaptic ending. Third one is gap in between presynaptic and post synaptic ending that is synaptic cleft. So these three things they form a synapse. <coughs> now coming to the classification of synapses. Synapses can be classified by physiological or functional classification and the second classification is anatomical classification. In the physiological or functional classification there are three types one is chemical synapse second is electrical synapse and the third one is mixed synapse okay so the chemical synapse is in almost all the synapses almost all of the synapses in the human being they are of the chemical synapses this electrical or the mixed one they are present in either the lower vertebrate animals or invertebrate animals why we are discussing these electrical synapses with chemical synapses to understand the difference between these two okay so like say the chemical synapse this one we have covered very in very details in the previous classes so i'll just try to draw the diagram of this is suppose suppose this is presynaptic neuron and this is postsynaptic neuron the difference is between the chemical and the electrical is first of all the synaptic gap synaptic gap is of only 2 to 3 nanometer in electrical synapse but in the chemical synapse it's of very large compared to the 2 to 3 it can be 10 nanometer or more okay near about so the second thing is synaptic delay synaptic delay within the electrical impulse it's not there but in the chemical synapse there is synaptic delay what do you mean by the synaptic delay? Synaptic delay means when we stimulate this presynaptic neuron, there will be generation of action potential. That action potential will travel along and reach till the end. Over here, it will release the neurotransmitter. These neurotransmitters are getting released, and these neurotransmitters will go and get attached to the receptor on the postsynaptic neuron. And after the attachment, there will be opening of few of the channels in the this part of the neuron, initial part. Like say, this is the soma, this is the body, and this is exon. So the part of the soma near the exon where the actual emulsion starts, this part is called as exon hillock. And along this entire segment, there are scattered sodium channels. But this exon hillock part is the one which has got the maximum number of the highest number or highest concentration of the sodium channel in any part of the soma, this exon hillock. So because there are very high concentrated sodium channels present over here, obviously they will get opened up and there will be generation of either the excitatory post potential or inhibitory post potential which will ultimately result in generation of the action potential. So this entire process like release of the neurotransmitter, travel along, excite or stimulate the receptor, then generate the action potential. It will take some time. That time is called a synaptic delay. And all these things are not happening in electrical synapse. In the electrical synapse, just a current is coming and traveling. So there is no synaptic delay. That is one thing. The second important point in this one is unidirectional and bidirectional conduction. We always say the chemical synapse is unidirectional. It is never the bidirectional. The important thing to understand what is meaning of unidirectional is the direction of 
the action potential along with the synapse. So this is the presynaptic neuron. This is postsynaptic neuron. And as I said in the previous sketch, this part is the axon hilo. There is generation of the action potential. So we are considering this entire thing as chemical synapse. So this action potential generated, it will move along this direction. And suppose this, there is a third neuron. Then what this action potential will do? This action potential will make the neurotransmitter to get released and excite this third neuron. Suppose this is the third neuron. And this one is second. And this one is first. So initially, the second order neuron, it got excited because first order neuron released the neurotransmitter. Now, this action potential got generated over here. This action potential is moving in this direction and it is also moving in this direction. Means from the origin site, site of the origin, it is moving in this direction as well as in this direction. But we are saying chemical sinus is unidirectional. So this unidirectional means the movement of the action potential along this way will make the neurotransmitter to get released and excite the next neuron. This is third. But the movement of this action potential, like this action potential in this direction, will never release the neurotransmitter and will never make the first neuron to generate the action potential. That is the meaning of unidirectional. It means, suppose I am trying to draw the diagram again, this is the